Hello, welcome to Learn the Stats. In this video, I'm going to be going over descriptive and inferential statistics. The first one I want to go over is descriptive statistics. And just as the name suggests, it is about describing the data. It's about describing the data points with a summary statistic. And so we're going to go over those summary statistics. The first example I want to go over is mean, median, and mode, also known as measures of central tendency. So what, what that saying is the data typically lies around these points. The second type of statistic I want to go over is the range and standard deviation. So this is looking at the dispersion of the data. So how far does the data go or how, how far does it spread? Even with how far does it spread, you know, what is the typical concentration of that spread? And so you have the range and standard deviation that kind of measure those two things. And the third one is skewness, which answers the question of, all right, is it asymmetric or symmetric? Is it positively or negatively skewed? What is the pattern of data as it lies is what this is trying to get at. And so that's typically what the descriptive statistics go over. So inferential statistics is the next type of statistic. And the important thing here is there's actually a process for trying to understand inferential statistics. It requires a sample of the population. The reason why you need a sample is because you're trying to understand a relationship. And I'll go into that as we walk through this. The first example of an inferential statistic is hypothesis tests. So what you're doing here is you're comparing maybe the average of something to an expectation. Say you expect the height of men in America to be two meters tall. Uh, all right, let's take a sample and do that. Or say you want to compare it between two populations. What's the difference in height between men and women, for example? Those are examples of showing relationships. The next is confidence intervals. So confidence intervals are very important because it brings in the aspect of error that the samples naturally have compared to a census when you take everything within the population. Most fields of study are unable to get a census on everything. In fact, most of the time it's impossible. So that what they do is they do a survey and the survey has error attached to it. There's this margin of error rate and that's reflected in the confidence interval. Now, say you have a 95% confidence interval for height between 1.5 meters and 2.5 meters. What is that actually saying? What it's saying is you're 95% confident that the true mean that that is a parameter or what you would get if you took the census of the population is between 1.5 and 2.5. That is how confident you are with this test. And that's what it's saying. You're not saying it's specifically two, but you're saying it's between 1.5 and 2.5, and this is how confident we are. So it's again, it's a statistic based off a relationship. Third one is regression analysis. And what regression analysis does is you have a dependent variable and you're saying, does this dependent variable get influenced by these independent variables? So you're trying to show a causality between them or an influence between them. And it does take into account both hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. The difference is that it's showing you a pattern in a way that the other two can't. And it shows you correlation and, as well as other, other things. But what it's, again, what it's doing is it's trying to show whether or not there is a relationship between the dependent variables and the independent variables. Now between the descriptive and inferential statistics, you can kind of see where some of them match up in, in some way. You're like you know that hypothesis testing uses means and medians depending on if you're using parametric or non-parametric approaches. Confidence intervals use standard deviations to, to get their margin of errors. And regression analysis shows a pattern of the data in a relationship in a similar way that skewness shows a pattern of the data. There is a lot of confusion when you're just learning these terms and because so much of it relates to one another. The ultimate question for differentiating between the two is, does the statistic show a relationship or simply describe the data? And so that's, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. And if you thought it was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a video, I typically take suggestions and I make videos based off those suggestions. I answer within a day. So uh, if you're studying for an exam, I can help. Uh, I won't do the exam for you, but I can help. And um, lastly, I just want to say thanks for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.